The promise of a driverless future is one that has the potential to profoundly change the way we think about transportation. It could cut down on traffic, make the roads safer, and give drivers more free time. There are a lot of companies developing and testing autonomous vehicles, each with their own angle on how to address hurdles. Lyft is one of them. Unlike everyone else, it's taking a mixed approach to AV innovation. Not only is Lyft developing its own self-driving tech, it's allowing others to integrate into its ride-hailing platform. And CNBC got an exclusive look inside Lyft's Level 5 self-driving lab. We have two autonomous initiatives. One is the open platform, where we're connecting Lyft passengers with our partner self-driving vehicles. And so this is Aptiv in Las Vegas and Waymo in Chandler, Arizona. And then also the product experience for the tech that you see here, which is level five. By opening up its platform, Lyft enables other self-driving companies to provide rides through the Lyft app. We think that self-driving is bigger than just one group, one organization, and we think that this is a, a great way to help accelerate self-driving overall. Waymo's pilot program in Arizona uses the Lyft app to request and facilitate some of its autonomous rides. The same partnership is also happening with Aptiv, which started testing its AV fleet in Las Vegas in 2018. Altogether, Lyft operates the largest public self-driving commercial program in the U.S., having completed over 75,000 rides. And it's this approach that Lyft says will push ride-sharing to the forefront of the self-driving revolution. We believe people, especially our riders, will experience self-driving on our platform first. All of Lyft's autonomous testing takes place at its Level 5 facility in Palo Alto. From the outside, an ordinary building right at home in a corporate office park. But inside, an AV laboratory. Level 5 within Lyft, or our goal is to bring self-driving technology to the Lyft platform. And we've been doing it for about two and a half years. We have about 400 engineers across a number of sites. We're in Munich, London, Bellevue, Palo Alto, San Francisco as well. So far, Lyft has been testing its tech on Ford Fusions. And very soon, Lyft will announce new testing on Chrysler Pacificas. We're leveraging the Ford Fusion platform, the vehicle platform, and then we're augmenting it with hardware and software. Lyft's autonomous vehicles resemble most other self-driving cars, utilizing similar sensors and technologies to take in information about the world around it. In here we have cameras, we have radar, and we have LiDAR as well. We also have what we refer to as the whiskers. These are additional LiDAR. The whole idea here is that with all of these sensors, we can see 360 degree around the vehicle. The signals from this hardware get fed into the trunk, which is our compute. Two years ago, we were just kind of sitting, just starting to play with the technology, just the actuation of the acceleration and the brakes. Now, we actually are driving these vehicles that you can see outside every day in Palo Alto in a self-driving mode. And in fact, we even have an employee pilot where we're giving self-driving rides to our employees in, in the Palo Alto area. When Lyft employees request a self-driving ride, it functions practically the same as calling a regular Lyft. It's all done within the same app customers are familiar with, and self-driving shows up as another ride option. If we have a self-driving car nearby and available, you can open up your Lyft app and take a self-driving car the same way you would a normal Lyft. The whole goal of this is to make it feel very similar to how it is today. The pilot that we're doing with our employees in the Palo Alto area. And for us, that's a really big milestone because you're testing the experience, you're testing the pickup, you're testing the drop-off. And these are like really challenging pieces that if you were just kind of blindfolded, focused on the car, we think you would miss out. As Lyft builds and tests its own vehicles, it's connecting riders to those vehicles through its partnerships with Waymo and Aptiv. Let's imagine that you land in Las Vegas and you want to try a self-driving Lyft for the first time. So for you, this would literally look like opening up your Lyft app at any of the locations that we support with our partner Aptiv. And instead of seeing just a classic Lyft or a shared Lyft, suddenly you would see a self-driving mode. We've taken a lot of the data that we've leveraged here and we've opened it up. So we've created the second largest uh, autonomous data set right now where we're looking to accelerate other areas uh, and other companies as well. 
Lyft says its expertise as a rideshare company provides a unique foundation for the addition of autonomous technology because all its ride data provides advanced insight into which ride requests are best served by an AV or a traditional vehicle. If you're going to go from here to the airport, I know that start and I know that end, and I can look at the weather, I can look at the traffic, I can look at construction, I can look at the routes, and I can effectively in real time compute the complexity of the route that you may take to the airport. And so then I can provide you a self-driving car. However, if for some reason there's a complicated part of that route, I can also provide you a traditional lift. The first time most people will be introduced to self-driving vehicles will be through a rideshare platform. For consumers, for the average consumers, autonomous technology is mainly going to be available through uh, ride hailing services, you know, which may include Uber and Lyft and, and various other services. You know, GM Cruise is going to operate their, their own service. Ford is going to be operating a service of their own. Uh, others you know, are, are going to follow a similar path. Companies like Uber and Lyft have an advantage because they have a fleet of cars already on, on the roads. Having presence in, in the streets and being able to collect a lot of data uh, is always good because the thing that makes these machine learning algorithms improve and get better is, as we all know, is massive amounts of data. All that data is why Lyft says opening its platform to other companies makes sense. It will improve the overall customer experience when self-driving hits the rideshare platforms first. The way that we look at it is that we can allow very much a focused deployment in isolated areas at first, and over time, you start to see that grow in terms of the vehicle capabilities and our ability to kind of scale that technology. And you start to move it to additional cities, uh, additional use cases. But what's great from the hybrid perspective is that as a passenger, you're completely abstracted from it and you're always going to get a ride. The safety of self-driving tech is a major concern for Lyft. So it's working with others to develop best practices. 40,000 people die on American roads each year most of those due to preventable accidents. Self-driving is fundamentally going to come to market as a collaborative effort between companies like Lyft and regulators to make sure that we are doing this safely and in a way that is beneficial for society. In October 2019, Lyft joined the Automated Vehicle Safety Consortium as a core member. AVSC, which is Automated Vehicle Safety Consortium, is a group of companies, so this is GM, this is Ford, this is Daimler, this is Toyota, and even Uber and SAE coming together, working on best practices, not only for the development of self-driving vehicles, but also the deployment as well. And the goal here is to share our best practices as it relates to this technology. Gaining public trust is another hurdle. Lyft hopes that introducing customers to self-driving options on a familiar platform will make those first experiences with the technology more positive. What we're doing is bringing that understanding of how people are thinking about new technologies into this self-driving experience. 96% of people tell us they want to ride again, which I think is one of the most powerful insights that we've generated in the first few years of running this program. As Lyft and its partners expand self-driving programs, working with cities and local law enforcement will be crucial to its success. I think people underestimate making sure that like, these, are, these are safe, that we deploy it in a the correct way that both the public understand, and then also from like a regulatory environment as well. We want to make sure that we, we follow the rules and we find an effective way to, to do this. In Chandler, Arizona, Waymo is testing its pilot program with the cooperation of local law enforcement and city government. I don't think you could stand at a street corner or drive a couple miles without seeing a Waymo vehicle. Chandler has been a city that has embraced technology. We've worked very well with them in terms of letting them ex expand their, their models and, and continue to educate their vehicles on our roads, and it's been a great relationship. The city of Chandler saw a 4% drop in traffic accidents in 2018 compared to 2016, when Waymo first started testing its self-driving vehicles there. We recognize this technology as something that could really impact um, our, our roadways because the overwhelming majority of collisions are um, preventable. What's exciting about this is that there's a great potential um, that this technology may potentially save lives and make the roadway safer. So when that was presented to us, certainly uh, it piqued our, our attention and something that we uh, are excited to be part of. 
I, I play in this adult kickball league that uh, plays on Thursday nights. We would go uh, over to the bar afterwards and grab some drinks. And then I could count on Waymo to you know, give me a ride home. Uh, and it works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So always available, nice and safe and responsible. Doesn't cost very much. And one day, when self-driving vehicles become the norm, we could even see changes in the way cities are designed to accommodate this shift in transportation. The first in the nation having a rideshare program with an autonomous vehicle company. We have um, also written some of our city code, allowing if any of our companies in expansion or initial construction, if they will put in pullout bays that will allow any kind of rideshare, whether it's uh, existing Lyft or Waymo, we're reducing the parking requisites that they would have to build, realizing that this is part of the future and that we shouldn't and they shouldn't have to have as many parking spaces. We have this opportunity to reshape cities around people rather than around cars. For now, the tech Lyft is developing inside its Level 5 lab is only being tested in limited programs. But Lyft says self-driving rideshares will be a critical part of the future.